I'm at a gypsy. I just don't think, at least from a personal level, and I just I don't know that many people that are influenced on a bike sales thing. I feel like that changed with KTM and Dungey though. Like I think that that was a point where it really was like, okay, they're selling some motorcycles now off winning. And maybe Kenny did it a bit when he lit everyone up in the, those first three rounds when that new Honda came out. But like, honestly, man, like I don't know that people buy bikes based off the race win stuff. I think that it's more that personality who's your favorite guy, and mm. it's not always the guy that wins. Yeah, no, I, I would I would agree. A li- there's like a I, little I, bit I think that there's sure. yeah, there's both definitely, sides. Definitely, there's definitely ways that people can be persuaded that one well, bike's like, better than the other. Per, perfect example. Sorry, I cut you off. How many Kawasaki's did you see in the 450 main event on the weekend? Yeah, only with the one that's, one. that's supported by the you know the australian kawasaki guys how many who won the most main events in supercross 2018 what brand in uh, oh in the the u.s kawasaki uh, Kawasaki for sure you know and i mean that's a super isolated example Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. uh, what i'm what i'm getting at is it just doesn't directly translate no i i would agree with that and i think that in that respect kawasaki has also made a, a huge they took a gamble but I think it's a gamble that's going to pay off because they're the first Japanese bike to really jump into putting hydraulic clutch on the bike. Mm. You know, they're not the first to put uh, electric start, but now they have electric start. Yeah, that new thing does. Look so good. I, I think, I do think that the new Kawasaki is is looked at differently. It's the first bike, it's the first Japanese brand to essentially go up against the Austrian Do bikes, the KTM you know? model, yeah. And I think that people respect that part of it because though I'm fortunate to know the ins and outs of why these companies, the Hondas, the Suzuki's, the Yamahas, don't essentially just throw all this stuff on their production bikes, it's, you got to applaud, I think, a company that wants to go out and build a badass bike you know because at the end of the day you're a racer and i'm not average joe going and riding you know the local trails you know like you want a motorcycle that's rad Mm. you know so i think that 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 formula is cool and i and i hope that that is something that we all we all follow suit you know so um i have obviously you know with being back with working with the Japanese with Suzuki um I know that a lot of the conversations and a lot of the questions mm. that we that we have are electric start hydraulic clutch you know all these essential things that are are foreign to Japanese brands it's crazy how stubborn know. they are man the Japanese I don't know that I would you I guess is it stubborn are no they? once upon a time I would say stubborn but as I've become older and in and i probably care or or i've maybe after actually post running my own race team yeah okay and understanding budgeting and how much money you spend to make a motorcycle a half pound lighter or you know all these essential things it doesn't really matter yeah like when you look at you know uh, like the japanese bikes right now you know and (laughs) <laughs> I hate saying it when you, when you're a Japanese bike guy, but they're so heavy compared to a you know to a KTM and a Husky. Like I'm talking 15, 20 pounds heavier. That's insanity. It, you know what I mean? And I can't even bicep curl that. Right? <laughs> and it's like when you think about it, you're that much lighter. You have electric start. You have a battery. All the like, you know, all, yeah, all the shit all the, that goes with that, all the wiring and crap that goes with it, a hydraulic clutch. Essentially, you got all these cool things, and your bike is still lighter. And I just think that th- there's a general consensus of people embracing that evolution. Mm. I think you know, and 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 maybe I'm wrong, but I think the Japanese don't. They're not buying into that straight racing aspect of it you know like they yeah. they they're still aiming at the core people buying the motorcycle that isn't me you know like 
because I'm not the perfect example of somebody going and buying a bike. You yeah. know, like it's it's average Joe, you know, weekend warrior guy that's super pumped on his bike, you know, because he's a Suzuki guy through and through kind yeah. of thing. So yeah, you you definitely see it differently when you when you have been exposed to it more, you know. Yeah, it makes sense. But the racer in me definitely wants to get frustrated. Yeah, yeah. like I want him. You want everybody to push the envelope, you know, like some of the stuff that I try and I get to race with, you know, the general public would be pumped on that and that would make a difference and they would like that, you know, but. But the cost to put that into production but is yeah, outrageous. Obviously, the cost to put that into production is, is far outweighs the. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.